the, the whole issue of guru, who's a qualified guru, who's an qualified guru. We were exploring the idea that, well, if, if in fact a qualified guru is such a rarity, um, then how is something like the Krishna Consciousness Movement supposed to go on? How are the teachings supposed to get spread? How is it supposed to, like, you know, infiltrate into society? Uh, perhaps you're taking too radical of an interpretation, too um, extreme or dogmatic a, uh, an approach to uh, the whole issue of guru, qualified guru and guru succession. Well, first of all, spreading, it's spreading, but what's spreading? It's spreading into society. But what's spreading? You know, pseudo Krishna consciousness spreading into society has no eternal value. So we need the real thing to be spreading. Now the rarity of Guru. First of all, Shastra directly says, Samahatma Sudur Labaha. Su Dur Labaha. Labaha means gain. Dur means Dur Labaha means very difficult to gain. Sudur Labaha means extremely difficult to gain. Samahatma, that Mahatma, who is the Mahabhagava, Sudur Labaha is very difficult. So Bhagavad Gita says that the Mahabhagava is very, very rare. Agreed or no? That's true. That's what it says. All right. So that uh, Vava intoxicated, Prema intoxicated, Mahabhagava on the highest level of Guru, very rare. But also what's rare is the disciple who deserves to contact him. This is what's being misunderstood here. The emphasis should not be on the guru being rare. The emphasis should be on the disciple being rare. The person who actually deeply wants to have a genuine guru is a rare commodity. The human form is very rare. So, and then very rare within the human form, or let's just say rare, very rare might be taken a little too far, but rare is that human who says, I need to, I need not only to escape, I really want to escape, that's true, I want liberation, escape means liberation. Escaping the laws of material nature means liberation from those laws. So, moksha, mukti. But even beyond that, vimukti, meaning to go to the spiritual sky for uh, rejuvenating the eternal relationship with the Supreme Personality of Godhead in the spiritual sky. Someone with that very great desire, very deep, profound desire, automatically will do, will act in ways that he, he or she, but will use the male gender just to make things simple. He will automatically be dictated by Paramatma, do this next, pass this test next, do this for me next. Now you do this. And he will follow those instructions and he will therefore, through following those instructions from Paramatma, will be led to the Guru because the sincere disciple who's serious attracts the guru to himself. The guru exists, but uh, Gaurakashar Das Babaji, genuine guru, but he was hard to find. He is hard to attract him to you. And he only accepted one disciple. So the issue here is really the number of disciples. If you get into the number game, a bit. Numbers mean nothing in regard to the absolute truth. Spreading pseudo-Krishna consciousness, that's not ultra-difficult to do. There's some difficulty in it, but it's not ultra-difficult. But spreading real Krishna consciousness, that's very difficult because that requires the guru and a sincere disciple who gets genuine initiation because the guru is genuine. To get that guru, you need to be sincere, serious, have knowledge, and luck. All those things are needed. You need to have some gravity, some seriousness, 
a frivolous person cannot contact a guru, or let's just say that if he does contact a guru, it's by great fortune, and in many cases he will not take advantage because he's frivolous. To be serious about it means that the guru is full of knowledge and heavy. Guru means heavy with knowledge. So a serious person, he's also got some gravity. So he naturally gravity attracts the most great. Sincere means what? We discussed that previously. Honesty. Sinceres. In the Roman times, there were coins, but also, unlike today, or today is less like that time, coins were not the main medium, and paper money was not the medium. There was an important medium of statues. Statues were very big in the Roman times. So if you had a high quality statue from a sculptor, then uh, you had a commodity that you could get valuables, either coins from it or wheat or houses or whatever. So, but what cheapened these statues was if there were uh, nicks that, that carved out small holes into the statue. So if there was that, then the statue lost significant value, just like a new car, once you pull it off the lot, it automatically goes down a significant amount because now it's a used car. But in those days, they didn't think like that. Uh, the age of the statue could actually add to its value, but if it had nicks in it, chips out of it, then, so if somebody was gonna sell the statue in order to become wealthy, you wanted to have a statue that didn't have any of these uh, nicks or chips. Those, this, the Latin for that was called ceres, C-E-R-E-S. If it, uh, any nick was called a ceres or chip out of it. Sin uh, was a prefix, means without. So you wanted sin ceres. You wanted a statue that did not have the ceres in it. So the word that we use, sincere, means straightforward, honest, you're without duplicity. What you're saying is what you're meaning. What you're wanting is what you're really wanting. You're not sophisticated. You're sincere, you're sincere. Just like that statue that it, they say, all right, is your statue, I'm willing to buy it for X amount of lira or whatever they were using. Is it sincere? Then I'll buy it for that. Otherwise, with Ceres, I might not buy it at all. It's got even one ship. So a disciple needs to be sincere, which means honest. Because that process of honesty is a Brahminical quality, as we talked about earlier. Shamahat Damahat Tapak Shaucham, Shanti Arjvamevacha, Gyanam Vigyanam Astikyam, Brahmakarma Svabhavjam. Brahmakarma, the Brahmins, their work, their karma, that they're born with by their nature, by their essence, by their svabhava. Ramakarma svabhava jam, by their state of being that they're born with, is they're born with the honest quality. They're honest with themselves and they're honest with others. They're straightforward. This quality is very much required in order to become uh, successful. So you say, oh, we have an inflation of bogus gurus. Yeah, I agree. But the fact of the matter is that there's also an inflation of insincere seekers, insincere quote-unquote disciples, although that term has to be used loosely in this case because disciple means discipline. So it comes from that word discipline. So if there's really undisciplined person to call him a disciple, he may be an initiated adherent, that would be more apt a phraseology. So dogma means uh, wrong teaching said to be right teaching, wrong process said to be right process.